Here's a list of foods that you should avoid on a low-carb, high-fat diet. Now, I'm not saying you can never consume these foods, but I'm saying these are foods that are consumed regularly. I see them consumed a lot, and we need to significantly reel back how much we consume of these because they could totally derail your results if you have too much of them. So we're gonna cover things like different oils. Then we're gonna move into dairy, specific kinds of dairy. We're gonna talk about meats, and we're gonna talk about specific kind of starches slash fibers that you might see in foods. So let's go and have some fun with this, and you're gonna learn a lot the end of this video. But first, please do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and please do hit the bell icon. That way you get notified whenever I post a new video daily. That's right, daily. All right, let's have some fun with this. The first thing is one that you know is probably something you shouldn't have, hydrogenated oils. The hard part is you don't always know when you're getting trans fats or hydrogenated oils because the FDA allows brands and companies to not list trans fats on the label if it's less than half a gram. Well, the thing is, a half a gram of trans fats is actually really bad. So you wanna keep an eye out for any hydrogenated oil. Here's what they do inside the body. Hydrogenated oils disrupt our actual cellular membrane because they've been adulterated to be more shelf stable. You take a perfectly good oil and you turn it into a nasty oil because you add hydrogen to make it more stable. That's complex, but that's what happens. The body just simply doesn't know how to break it down. And what it does for you science nerds out there is it blocks type one and two prostaglandins. Those are the prostaglandins that reduce inflammation within the body, but it doesn't block type two prostaglandins. Type two prostaglandins trigger inflammation. So directly we cause serious inflammation, which defeats the whole purpose of a low carb diet to try to control and modulate inflammation. Now, as an extra with this particular tip, you wanna avoid these following oils, whether they're hydrogenated or not. Avoid grapeseed oil, try to avoid corn oil, definitely try to avoid soybean oil, try to be careful with refined coconut oil, and lastly, canola oil, which we see everywhere. Just be careful with it. A little bit's not gonna kill you, but just be careful. Next up on the list is cheap dairy. Here's what's up with dairy. It's not bad. Enjoy your heavy cream, go to town on it, and enjoy half and half every now and then. But remember, half and half is half cream, half milk. And that milk sugar is definitely hard on your body, especially if you're on a low carb diet because you're gonna be more sensitive to it. So I just want you to be careful. But the main thing I want you to be focused on is what the label says. If it says pasteurized processed cheese, that is technically still 100% cheese, it's just been processed. If it says pasteurized processed cheese food, that means that it's between 51% and 100% cheese. So it's still not really cheese, so avoid that one. Then if it says pasteurized cheese product, that means it's less than 51% cheese. Avoid that. The downside is with the hyper palatability of all these different brands out there and companies trying to take advantage of the low carb train, oh, we're seeing more and more of these just negative attributes of foods. We're seeing cheese product. We're seeing pasteurized just garbage. Okay, so just avoid that and be very careful. Also, side note, be careful with your cottage cheese. Make sure it doesn't have carrageenan in it. Make sure it doesn't have all those different, different preservatives. You just want it to be simple. It should just be a couple ingredients. Very, very clean and simple. Next up is something that you're gonna see in a lot of chocolates and a lot of bars, and it's really unfortunate. Soluble corn fiber. Okay, soluble corn fiber is where they take corn syrup and they extract a fiber out of it. Now. Food marketers will tell you, well, soluble corn fiber is fine. In fact, it's not digestible. In fact, it acts as a prebiotic fiber because it's not digestible. Plastic's not digestible either. Does that mean that it's a prebiotic fiber? Okay, you could argue that yes, it's a fiber derived from corn syrup, so it feeds the gut bacteria. The hard part is it's corn, and the corn by itself is already not very good. When you take the corn syrup and you concentrate it, you're basically making a maltodextrin, which has been shown to reduce levels of bifidobacteria within the gut. So sure, you might feed some bacteria in the process of hindering the growth of others, but the big thing is you're gonna feel bloated because you can't digest it, and it's just used as a cheap way to fluff up an ingredient. So with all the keto bars coming out there in the market and all the keto treats, you really have to do your due diligence and pay very close attention. I could go on and on with this list in terms of what's in a bar, but I think soluble corn fiber is the big one we need to look out for. I do recommend if you're looking for a clean treat, check out Boo Foods, B-H-U. 
They are the cleanest little keto bar I've probably seen so far to the point where they don't even use erythritol because they don't want to use the GMO corn. Okay, so really cool stuff. Check them out down below in the description. They are a big sponsor of this channel and they support a lot of the content that I create. But anyway, I just recommend that you try them out. Totally keto friendly. My little kiddo, my toddler loves them and it's something I feel comfortable giving him. So big shout out to them and also special discount for those of you watching this video right now if you would like to check them out. Link's in the description, but I recommend you finish watching the rest of this video so that you have the entire big picture before you make a choice on if it's for you or not. But I think you'll like it. This next one doesn't come as a big surprise. It's peanut butter. Now, most brands of peanut butter that are out there on the mainstream shelves are total garbage, right? They already have hydrogenated fats, which are already on the list. They usually have sugar added to them. And even the reduced fat ones have more sugar added to them. And then you're left with a plethora of other just preservatives and things like that. So yeah, you definitely want to be avoiding the peanut butters for that reason. But then we get to a point where we get some of these healthy peanut butters that are just ground peanuts and a little bit of oil. So a couple things you have to look out for. If you see on the label that there's peanuts and then another oil added to it, you know that they're really trying to just fluff up how much they can produce. You don't see that too much anymore, but what you do have to be careful of is just an overconsumption of peanut butter. I'm not anti-peanut butter, okay? Like if you can get a good clean peanut butter, that's fine, have a tablespoon now and then. But way too many people try to get their calories up with it. First of all, it is an omega-6, which means it's definitely going to contribute to inflammation within the body. But secondly, super high in phytic acid, which means it's chelating minerals within the gut. Okay, even more so than almonds. Almonds get a bad rap because, oh, they chelate minerals, they stop the absorption of minerals. Peanut butter's even worse. But if you really want to go down the rabbit hole of peanut butter, if you overconsume peanut butter, it is high in lectins, which are an anti-nutrient and have been shown in various models to trigger inflammation within the gut. Remember, one of the benefits of this low carb, high fat lifestyle that we're after is the production of beta hydroxybutyrate, which is anti-inflammatory to begin with. So why would we try to combat that with something that's very pro-inflammatory? Again, I'm not saying never eat this stuff, okay? The thing is, you're human. I'm human. I consume these things from time to time. I had a chocolate piece of chocolate the other day, and then I looked at the label and was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I read? It had soluble corn fiber in it. Did I vanish off the face of the earth? Am I not here to film this video? No, I'm still here. I did feel it, by the way, but I'm still here. Have peanut butter now and then, but it should not, and I repeat, should not be a staple within your diet. Now I'm about to blow your mind with meat. Yep, cheap deli meat. Okay, well, yeah, we've heard about the nitrites and the nitrates. No, forget that. That's not that big of a deal. Okay, our body converts nitrite into nitrate. <laughs> That's a natural thing. We're gonna get it from celery. Don't worry about that. The whole carcinogen study with that leaves a lot to be desired. That's not the issue. Most deli meats end up having a bunch of maltodextrin in them, a bunch of dextrose, a bunch of things just to stabilize the meat and make it more shelf stable. That's the problem. Low quality sodium, totally just demineralizing the body of the other minerals because you have so much of an abundance of sodium. The problem really lies in what they add to it. But yeah, you can find some clean deli meats, but the fact is, if you do, they're going to be grain fed. So they're going to have a high degree of omega-6 fatty acid profile, which is not what you want on keto. Just get a higher quality meat or have a can of tuna instead. The other thing is gonna be the rotisserie chickens. Be very careful with those. Here's what usually happens with the rotisserie chickens, and it's not always, but I would say it's more so the rule rather than the exception, okay? They take the chickens that have been on the shelf, the whole chickens that didn't sell and are close to expiring, and then they put them on the rotisserie and then they sell them to you, okay? So basically you have a chicken that's been sitting on the shelf about to go bad, which means the fats have probably oxidized. It probably has a good level of what are called amines. If you're a science nerd, you know what that means. Point is, it's gonna be hard on your body. And then they cover up the fact that it's probably lost its flavor with a bunch of salt and MSG to make it taste halfway decent. Just avoid the rotisserie chickens. I think Whole Foods has some halfway decent ones that are a little bit fresher, but I may be wrong. And then lastly, we have to be very concerned with the overconsumption of grain-fed meats. Grain-fed meats are going to be high, mainly, of course, in omega-6s, but also glyphosates. Glyphosates are what you get from uh, Roundup being sprayed on wheat that is ultimately fed to the cattle or whatever it is they're feeding. The issue is how that glyphosate actually affects what is called complex IV or cytochrome P450 within the electron transport chain within our body. If you get down to the molecular level and the electron transport chain and how our body creates energy, well, that byproduct that's the result of corn and soy and wheat and everything like that, that causes a big disturbance in how we manufacture and create energy within the body which makes it so that, well, we're thrown all out of whack. 
Additionally, glyphosate is a huge anti-nutrient. It chelates mainly to copper and zinc, which are so important for thyroid function. And my concern would be that if you overconsume this stuff, you could over the long term be doing damage to your thyroid. Does that mean you never, ever, ever consume grain-fed meats? No, come on, get real. I consume grain-fed meats too. I just say, whenever you possibly can, reduce that and try to go grass-fed. This day and age, it's not that much more expensive, and quite frankly, it tastes better and you'll feel better. So avoid these things in moderation. Be smart. See you tomorrow.